Hello and welcome back to the Joint Dota League Season 3. This is going to be the second game of a best of two series between No Earth Spirit and Tengen Gaming. We've already had the first set of bands coming out, and this game we're not going to be seeing the Pugna, so No Earth Spirit really highly prizing the Pugna in this patch. They'll go ahead and pick up the first Death Prophet, or first pick Death Prophet rather, and then it looks like Tengen Gaming are going to respond with the Faces Void, and I'd presume Skyrath Mage as their second pick. Either way, I'm Grandis Fiend, I'll be one of your casters today, and I'll be joined by Michael Loris. What do you think of the first couple of picks here? And yeah, there's that Skyrath Mage. You nailed it. Skyrath Mage faces Void is, a t is at this point, a timeless combination. The Chronosphere into a Mystic Flare will kill pretty much anyone. Like, there aren't many heroes that could withstand that. Death Prophet, after she gets really tanky, maybe. Viper, definitely. But No Earth going to be uh, solidifying up some early game push potential with, first of all, the Death Prophet pickup always going to mean you're going to be pushing, uh, similar to the Pugna that we saw last game. Viper going to add a little bit more bulk to the front lines, though. Tengen, with the Faceless Void, Time Walk, Chronosphere, they're already somewhat prepared to, to uh, deal with this upcoming push from North Spirit. Yeah. I don't know. Let's see. Razor banned out by um, No Earth Spirit. A fairly standard ban, probably just not wanting to let that go into the next phase. Um, but as it stands, mm, I don't know. No Earth Spirit's first pick, Death Prophet, kind of feels a little lackluster uh, without any way to keep heroes in place with that exorcism dealing damage on top of them. But still, if they're able to win a fight, uh, hopefully they pick up something to initiate into tank and gaming and possibly get the kill on the Skyrath or the Faces Void before the fight begins. Um, I don't know, they can still mow down those towers with the exorcism ultimate. Brewmaster still in the pool would be a fantastic pickup for Tengen. If they get the jump on Death Prophet before she's actually popping off the exorcism, uh, you'll have both Faces Void and Brewmaster with, uh, you know, working together is not really the easiest thing to do because Chronosphere doesn't play well with allies most of the time. But if you could catch the Death Prophet before she pops off exorcism when she's very, very far away from your towers and, uh, you know, catch her on her side of the map, then that's a great way to delay the pushing, which is inevitably going to be coming, which is inevitably going to be coming from the No Earth Spirit side. So more initiation is what Tengen Game are probably going to look for, and maybe a hero that does really well versus Death Prophet, though those types of heroes are kind of few and far between. Radiant. Yeah, I don't know. Interestingly enough, No Earth Spirit are going to ban out the Templar Assassin yet again. So just respecting Tengen Gaming's Templar Assassin, although I haven't seen them play it, I'm assuming it's going to be very strong if it's warranting these bans coming out from No Earth Spirit. I don't know, just interesting to see how different teams approach drafting. Yeah, I mean, half of drafting is picking up the strongest heroes, but half the other half is picking up the uh, heroes that you're most comfortable with, and that means denying the heroes yes, that the enemy team is go. most comfortable with. There seems to be something going on there with the TA, but uh, not really quite yes, sure. I'm kind of in the same boat as you. Yeah. We'll have to see what uh, Tang and Gamer are going to go ahead and pick up with that Faceless Void and the Skyrath Mage. Although it's already a great standalone combo, having something else that can pour damage into the Chronosphere is never a bad thing. Especially if that Faceless Void is played in more of a utility role in the offlane. Um, I'd like to see something, possibly an Invoker, coming out from Tang and Gaming in order to just uh, drop his combos into the uh, Chronosphere. Another really popular pickup for that Chronosphere combination is the Witch Doctor, who, you know, I love seeing the Witch Doctor. I think he's a great support hero, and if he does get his Death Ward in that Chronosphere, then whoever's in there is going to die really, really quickly, like absurdly quickly, disgustingly quickly. And uh, it's a nice Roman combination with Skyrath as well. You'll be able to put out a lot of damage. They're going to choose the Earthshaker instead, so Witch Doctor for now going to remain on the sidelines. But getting a nice stun is uh, going to be very useful for Tang, and delay the push from Death Prophet is also very useful with that Fissure. Yeah, definitely. Hopes for a mid Earth Shaker and Witch Doctor as a secondary support, but I doubt we'll be seeing that possibly, or probably, just going to be a support Earth Shaker to go along with that Skyrath Mage. Also, a solid roaming combo with Concussive Shot, you can set up some fairly easy mm -hmm. fissures, and, I don't know, they could get some kills early on, but I think it's more likely that we're just going to see the Skyrath Mage zoning out the offlaner while Earth Shaker runs the pulling operations for the Radiant side. Uh, Rubik is the pickup for no Earth Spirit. There's some decent spells on the enemy side to pick up. Um, if he can get his hands on, especially Fissure, is very wonderful. Chronosphere is kind of a double-edged sword, but can be useful. But on the side of Tank and Gaming, they're going to go ahead and pick up the Tinker, another hero that can put a lot of damage into the Chronosphere. Uh, with the heat-seeking missiles, laser, as well as march of the machines, there's a lot of ways they can damage heroes uh, from long distance. And if he has the time to rearm, he can do that uh, multiple times during the team fight. Yeah, Tinker's also that brick wall that you really want to have when you know you're going to be getting pushed. Laying down one or two March the Machines will blend the creep wave really quickly, and then once you start firing off the missiles, No Earth Spirit are going to be chipped down really, really hard, and suddenly they're pushing 
is a little bit more difficult. So it's either pick off the tinker beforehand or split push. And Death Prophet definitely doesn't really want to be on the split push train. So tanking with this tinker, uh, a nice defensive pick up against what's probably going to be a pretty aggressive lineup from the no Earth Spirit side. Yeah, Lightning for Tinker could be a little troublesome up against the Viper, but as long as he has a couple of camps in his own jungle and possibly even Ancients available for him to stack, he should be able to at least get his Boots of Travels up at a decent timing. Um, I would like to see the No Ear Spirit supports uh, block the Ancients from the Tinker because I think on the Radiant side, giving Tinker the availability of uh, stacking those Ancients, especially from the low ground with March of Machines, is just, I don't know, too good to be giving away. Mm -hmm, that extra income from Tinker is... Sometimes the only thing that Tinker has to look forward to in an entire game if he gets shut down really hard. Uh, as of right now, the roaming combinations, Rubik into you know whatever support you're at, no Earth Speed are going to pick up next. Really, you don't need that much to gank a Tinker. He'll have a laser to shut down one person if it is the Viper in the mid lane against him. The laser will be fired towards that Viper, but Tinker's a really soft hero. He doesn't have any way of escaping. No Earth Spirit, if they pick up any support hero that does damage at all, maybe go for another Ancient Apparition or something like that then uh, they'll be able to pick off the Tinker pretty frequently, and then Tinker's going to be very reliant on those jungle camps to get his travels up. That said, if this is a March Tinker later on, the March can be very scary to dive the Tinker into, so as long as the Tinker is positioned defensively, I think he'll be okay. Uh, but we'll just have to see what support is paired up with the Rubik. They might prove me wrong, oh. but it's going to be a Pudge really? coming out from no Earth Spirit. Well, what do you think? Pudge mid, Viper mid, or Death Prophet mid? Pudge mid, Viper off lane, Death Prophet safe lane? Uh, at least would be my assumption, unless that's a support roaming Pudge, which could also be a thing. I don't know, this Pudge pick's Damn, interesting, there's some go. decent heroes to pick off uh, with the Pudge. Skyrath, Mage, and Tinker are especially susceptible to being hooked, and Tinker, if you're able to anticipate where he's blinking off into trees, Pudge, a decent hero catching the Tinker out. Sure, Similarly to Clockwork, although not as good because he won't have a way to get vision beforehand. It's not just the Tinker either. If you're going to be pushing, you could wait on the Death Prophet Exorcism until Pudge throws out as many hooks as he wants, really. Eventually, one is going to connect and start a fight, and then that person out of position is probably going to drop pretty quickly unless it's Faceless Void, in which case you're probably going to be regretting you ever threw that hook. But yeah, Pudge as the fourth pick for No Earth Spirit, it's a hard hero to evaluate, seeing as though he's so rarely picked up, but... I think in this particular game, it's a pretty nice pickup. It, it'll at the very least add a little bit of a guessing game for Tangan as to who's going to be sent towards the mid lane. Yeah, well, Tangan are going to go ahead and pick themselves up the Invoker, so now this shakes up their lanes a little bit. I'd like to see them put the Tinker towards the safe lane and have Invoker mid versus the Viper, uh, as if this is an Exhort Invoker. He will be able to last it decently well later on, um, and still has the Cold Snap available uh, if the Viper decides to dive in. I don't know, I really have no idea how these lanes are actually going to settle down, however, but it looks like we're going to have an offlane phases void. Ten seconds to uh, go. Yeah, I mean, either way, for Tengen, their Earthshaker and Skywrath Mage, I think, are probably going Five to be seconds. roaming about most of the map, seeing as though they have stun into lots of damage. So, wherever they go, for they sure. will try to get kills. Whether it's it, on the Death Prophet, it's probably the most viable. Viper and Pudge, fairly tanky versus all that magic damage. Uh, seeing as though Viper and Pudge both inherently a lot more tanky than the Death Prophet. So uh, the lanes for Tangent are going to be, whoa, okay. Omni Knight as the last pickup for No Earth Spirit. The Omni Knight Pudge combo is real. I think it is indeed. I don't know. This No Earth Spirit lineup, the Viper, Pudge, and Omni Knight are going to all be incredibly tanky and. Especially with the Rubik Null Field on top of them, the magic burst damage coming up from Tengen Gaming is going to be incredibly reduced. Mostly coming up from the Skyrath Mage and the Tinker. Um, but Invoker and Faceless Void do have a decent amount of physical damage, but a very weird draft coming up for No Earth Spirit that could completely snowball out of control if Pudge uh, gets off to a good start and Death Prophet also is able to get those early towers down. Uh, but still, I was not expecting the Pudge and Omni Knight last picks. Up until the Rubik, it looked fairly conventional, but then... I don't know. Boom. I, I like non-conventional. This is this is completely okay yeah, with me. They cool. have once again built around a Death Prophet, whereas you know, last game I mentioned building around a Shadow Shaman. Nice. They've done the exact same thing. You wouldn't call any of these heroes really pushing heroes, but Omni Knight as the last pick I actually think is incredibly clever because putting a repel on a Death Prophet means that she could force fights out from the Faceless Void. Faceless Void is going to have to jump in and shut down the Death Prophet because Tinker with his march and Invoker with his magic damage is not going to do anything once Death Prophet has the repel on her. So it's a great little combination from Ban Earth. Of course, they'll also have the Omni Knight Pudge combo. Pudge takes no damage from Rot, and if he gets real close for a Dismember, Purification is going to be a huge nuke. 
So uh, it's a it's a pretty decent pick. Ordinarily, I don't like the hero, but uh, I think in this game it works pretty well. Well, yet again, I'll go ahead and introduce a Radiant side. Towards the offlane, we are going to have a Faceless Void taken up by Railgun. The mid is going to be taken up by Noobs R Us on the Tinker. And the uh, Radiant tri lane, uh, which is going to be towards their safe lane, will be taken up by Tunerla, playing on the Earthshaker with an Invoker played by Ryan Noob and Platinum on the Skyrath Mage. On the Ban Earth side, we have CSO playing the what looks like an offlane Pudge, although Amazing potentially dual lanes. Attack. He's joined by Glacius' Omni Knight. Mid lane is going to be played by Alex on the Death Prophet, fan of Soyon is going to be playing the Viper, and A Heart is going to be on the Rubik. What do you think about this laning from Tengen? I feel like laning the Invoker in a dual, potentially, tri-lane is not really what Tengen want to be doing with a hero like Invoker. Yeah, I don't know. We'll have to see. I think this Earthshaker is just going to try to make himself useful around the map by roaming. Um, Here we go. I don't know. We'll have to see if it's going to pay off. The Death Prophet's fairly easy gank, and he's going to have an Invisibility Rune to uh, set that one up. Although Tinker not the best level on hero, still has some decent damage if he gets a good fissure block. And, well, they will move the Skyrath Mage towards the middle lane as well, so it looks like these are going to be your uh, two roaming supports. Yeah, oh, no. that Invis Rune pickup was actually spotted by a Dire Observer Ward, so Alex should not die unless the Death Prophet suddenly feels like being a little bit suicidal. Could happen, but uh, just the Death Prophet's going to miss off the, on the first wave of potential last hits. Uh, seeing as though the Earthshaker is most likely chilling around that mid lane. The other lanes, though, going to be dual lanes for now. Ryan Noob on the bottom lane is going to be going 1v2. It's a ranged hero versus two melees, which ordinarily you would say ranged hero has that any day of the week. But this lane, in particular, the Omni Knight and Pudge is fairly dangerous once Pudge gets a couple levels of hook. Oh, no. Yeah, for now, Earthshaker is going to back off and attempt for a stack of the Ancients, but I think he's going to miss that as the Black Dragons are not going to move out of range, and indeed he's not going to be able to get the stack off. However, it hasn't been blocked, so at two minutes they will have an option to uh, stack that again, and once Tinker gets his Soul Ring online, he should be able to farm that and get a very fast Boots of Travels online. Uh, yeah, Ryan Noob down in this bottom line, he should be able to get experience at the very least, uh, especially as Pudge is only level two, and even early on, the Pudge's hook isn't the greatest range. Ooh, oh, he fishes for Ryan Noob, not going to connect though. I don't even know if that would have been a kill. Maybe with the uh, Purify nuke bomb, but I probably w I, that probably wasn't going to be enough. Earthshaker, as you mentioned before, is going to be roaming very, very heavily, and Platinum is actually roaming back to the bottom lane. So now a 2v2 lane, 2 range versus 2 melee. The Skywrath Mage is definitely in danger of dying if he does get hooked, but uh, I think the harassment that he's putting out is well worth the risk there. Of course, this means that Railgun on top side isn't going to be up against, hell, just a Viper alone would have shut down the Stasis Void almost completely. Having the Rubik there to do pulls on top of that, that's uh, not going to be a fun lane for the for the uh, Faceless Void up on top, but we see Tunerla looking for a Courier. Let's see if he's going to be able to get You usually don't expect this, the Earthshaker not going to have the range, didn't have boots and any real way to get that Courier kill. I believe he just felt that he wasn't able to get any kills in these lanes, and the gamble was probably worth the risk. Uh, but Bent Earth Spirit, we're on the ball, and we're keeping an eye on that career, able to micro that away from the Earthshaker. Earthshaker doesn't need a lot to contribute to his team. Really, level 1 Fissure is one of the most impressive level 1 skills in the game, seeing as though you have that barrier up for the full 8 seconds at every single level, but still, you would want to get some experience on the Earthshaker. He's been bouncing around the lanes, mostly hanging around mid, but all in all, he hasn't really been accomplishing all that much just yet. He would definitely be able to accomplish a little bit more on the bottom lane, it would open the door for some kill aggression from Tengen. They could try to go for a kill on, say, the Omni Knight. Uh, Repel's going to be hard to burn through, but once they dump all their spells and all their stuns, the right-click from Invoker should be able to clean up the rest of that Omni Knight's health. Yeah, I don't know. To start us off, we are going to have a fairly passive early game, which I would say uh, favors Tengen. With the Tinker, Invoker, and Faceless Void, three heroes that farm incredibly well with farm and also need a little bit of space. And on the side of Ban Earth, they have some aggressive heroes that really need to get off of the floor fairly quickly. We do have a Repel on bottom after the Cold Snap goes away of the Pudge. But, yeah. Sans any Fissures or Concussive Shots being thrown out by the Skyrath Mage. Uh, we won't be seeing that kill, and both of these supports are still level 1. With all of the roaming that they've done, Platinum and Tunerla are not going to be able to get any of uh, anything off of this map, really. They got a, lot of, a little bit of pull experience, but it's just not enough. They're sitting in mid, looking for Alex. They're going to start with an Arcane Bolt. Fissure, a beautiful Fissure gets him on the right side, but Sunstrike, not going to be so lucky. Probably should have thrown that earlier. Will the right clicks be there? They will. And Noobs R Us is actually the one to pick up the first blood. I think they might even be a little bit happy that Sunstrike missed. Down on bottom, it's going to be a trade of kills. Omni Knight for Pudge, or um, in Invoker for Pudge, excuse me, I'm not sure if you were watching that, 
Um, I wasn't. I was. Yeah. Little I missed that one too. I don't know. Without the Sunstrike, it looks like he was just able to kill him with the Cold Snap as well as the Forge Spirits. I'm not entirely sure um, how he died, honestly. Especially with the Omni Knight there, the Cold Snap probably wouldn't have been that effective. So possibly Glacius just playing a little too far back and CSO playing a little too far forward. Or maybe even the Pudge just wanted his uh, new cosmetics with that Flaming Hook as well as Hood. Yeah, also the fact that Invoker is probably intently staring at the middle lane, prepping for a Sunstrike, so the chances of him just getting a little bit out of position by not moving for a couple seconds is definitely a real one, but the important thing is that Tinker got that kill on the Death Prophet, a pretty big kill for that Tinker to have. It's going to give him a level 3 in that March of the Machines, and well, this Ancient Camp is actually not being stacked. I saw a couple of illusions from Tinker trying to stack that uh, right after they got the kill on the mid lane, but again, it's only stacked up twice, so it's not a lot of gold that they could potentially get uh, in that Ancient Camp. But they're bracing for aggression up on top side. Platinum, though, drawing creep aggro is going to take a lot of damage for any of the starts. Trouble brewing. Yeah, I don't know. I probably would have liked to see the Earthshaker Platinum stack that, but now they're going to stun up the poor Rubik. He's going to get bursted down. Our first hit, Bash on Phantom Soyan. They might have enough damage for him. I don't know. Sunstrike comes out, throwing the Invoker. He's going to land it. Invoker gets the kill on Viper. Yeah, Platinum took a lot of damage before then, and is down really, really low on the HP, but doesn't have anything to fear. Ordinarily, I would say Viper is one of the best heroes against Skyrath, having a high magic resistance, as well as the fact that Skyrath has very low armor and low health. Viper could tear through that in a hurry, but you know, going up against three heroes and also getting first hit bash, that's uh, it has to always happen like that. The first hit bash, it always seems to happen, and uh, well, that secured the kill for Tangan. That's going to put them at a pretty early 4-1 lead, a pretty substantial advantage considering the heroes that they're up against. I mean, Death Prophet. Eventually, she's going to start pushing, but the longer you could, the more of a level advantage you get before that, the better uh, position you'll be in when she does eventually start to push. Yeah, definitely. Viper, on the safe lane, he's picked himself up a ring of health to help uh, sustain throughout this lane. I'm assuming this is going to be a pipe up against the March of the Machines, Invoker's Nick Damage, Skyrath Mage, as well as Earthshaker, and even the Bashes coming out from Faceless Void. Just a lot of magical damage coming out from Tengen. So I'm on board with this choice. They might be leaving the uh, mechanism online or uh, for the Death Prophet to pick. I think that Banner Earth Spirit has done that in the past. Uh, but for now, this Death Prophet really doesn't have all that much farm. Is actually going to pick up Arcane Boots, presumably towards the Bloodstone. Yeah, they're looking for the kill. They're going to be able to get the Fissure off onto the Pudge, but he's going to be able to bring it back into that Purification. That Tinker just completely blown up from the pure damage coming out from that combo. Yeah, it's very hard to avoid. I thought Platinum was bracing Skyrath for Mage. a smoke. Oh, He's going to be chased down by the Pudge with the Haste Rune. It looks like he's going to be able to get... He drops the Silence on the Pudge, no hooks coming out. Oh, it wears off, and Rubik's actually going to die. Fishing in mid, not going to catch anybody. Yeah, Rubik up top looks like he just died to Phantom Soyan. Er, whoa. What just happened? Chronosphere was committed by the Faceless Void. Excuse me. Yeah, previously Rubik was trading hits with the Faceless Void before the Faceless Void is level 6. Now the Faceless Void is uh, packing that Chronosphere. Rubik is no longer free to duel up against that uh, Faceless Void. But uh, Ban Earth with a super aggressive movement came all the way from the bottom lane uh, through the uh, in between the Tier 1 and Tier 2 towers. I thought they were going to break a smoke since Skyrath was uh, waiting for a TP, but... They just went for it with that haste rune, and they found Tinker at the perfect timing. Uh, the ancient camp is still pretty much alive, yeah, and Tinker getting that death is going to slow down his boots travel just a little while longer. So Banner have a little bit more effective time before that. They have to truly worry about that global map Tinker presence. Yeah, I don't know. With his uh, first blood, however, Tinker still online for a very quick uh, boots of travel, and now Earthshaker going to stack that ancient camp one more time. At least, uh, hopefully, he should get that one. Actually, he's going to go towards the rune. I'd like to see him stack it and then walk it towards the rune spot instead of just sitting straight on the rune. And if an enemy hero is there, he can fissure. I don't know. Possibly a little bit of misplay, but still a double stack for the Tinker. Not shabby farm by any means, but if it was stacked one more time, he'd pretty much have his boots of travel done. Bottom lane is smoked up. Pudge isn't level 6 yet, so he doesn't have his dismember. However, they do have Guardian Angel if things get really hairy. Really just the pure damage from hook into purification is pretty much all you need to kill a vast majority of the Tangan heroes. So if CSO lands this hook on whoever he does land it on, that person is going to be really unhappy really quickly. CSO, they're revealed by the Forge Spirit, so Ryan Noob knows what's up now, and he most likely will not get hit by a hook. Yeah. I don't know, just good scouting coming out from the Invoker. They might go for it again. The Forge Spirit is being eaten up by the Pudge. Well... I don't know, it looks like Pudge is going to try uh, fishing for it, but just look at them hug the tree line here. Platinum as well as right, and you just very far on the right-hand side. More than likely not going to end up in kill. It looks like Pudge is just going to farm the lane. 
Well, they're going to slow up the Omni Knight. They're looking for the kill, but the Sunstrike is going to be off the mark. Hook also going to miss a nice fissure, but it blocks him on the wrong side. At the very least, they'll get the kill on the Omni Knight. Now, the rotation from the Earthshaker is going to stun up the Pudge, but he gets his dismember off. One more auto attack is going to be enough to get the double kill for Ryanu, but the Death Prophet with her ultimate as well as the Faceless Void coming into the fray. She bashes up the Death Prophet, and now the Chronosphere actually doesn't catch the uh, Rubik, unfortunately, but the Death Prophet looks like she's going to fall, as well as the Rubik. Platinum just on very low health, but in the end, four for zero is the trade in favor of Tengen. unfortunately did not have a TP there. If the Viper was there, I want to say that Tengen would have, at the very least, had an even fight instead of a really good one. But they take it home 9-3. to three. The Skyrath Mage was fighting the Rubik the entire time, and Skyrath Mage has gone for 3 points in Seal instead of the usual 3 points in Arcane Bolt. Didn't seem to matter as he was holding a level a one level advantage over that Rubik. And now CSO in the bottom lane, the physical damage might be enough. It will be. Ryanu gets a solo kill. Glacius, he might be forced into popping his Guardian Angel here if he wants to survive. He tried to get it off last last fight, but the cast animation just a little bit too slow, and Omni Knight could not get that one off. Would have been pretty huge if he managed to survive that Omni Knight. It also would have been applied to the Pudge, so a little bit more regeneration there. But unfortunately, that fight for Ban Earth uh, didn't really go well for them, as they were fighting without their Viper, and you don't really want to be fighting without your Viper ever. Yeah, pretty much. Oh no, this is very scary start for Bant Earth Spirit. Tinker's managed to find his soaring as well as Boots of Troubles before 10 minutes, and now is well on his way towards the Blink Dagger at 600 gold. I uh, don't think he has any more stacks, actually. Uh, so it will be a little bit of time before he has that Blink Dagger online, but we're going to be seeing this global presence coming up for the Tinker immediately. And then once he gets to the Blink, it's going to be hard for Bant Earth Spirit to catch him out unless they hit a very lucky hook. Yeah, as far as terrifying items, that definitely ranks up there, but along with that, the Invoker has picked up his hand of Midas, so he's going to start getting the turbo leveling going on. Noobs are us, going to run in a whole boatload in, of Ban Earth heroes, but he's going to be just fine for now. The March of the Machines deny any possibility of aggression as Glacius gets dropped very low. He's going to get silenced before he cast anything, and Platinum gets a free one. And Earthshaker also snapping off the Death Prophet with what looks like to be just a level 3 Fissure. Yeah, I don't know, March of Machines just did way too much damage during that fight. A good March positioning coming up from the Tinker. I think it was mostly trying to farm these two camps. Uh, but in the end, there was just nowhere for them to run inside of it. And Death Prophet almost just died to the March of Machines, but then that one Fissure was enough to secure the kill. I don't know, down in bottom in the meantime, Invoker as well as Pudge were uh, trying for the last hit on the tower. And Pudge uh, did get the deny secured for his team. So a little bit of economic damage done there, uh, but still... Tengen have a lot of tools that they'll be able to use to propel themselves towards the uh, late game with this Midas on the Invoker, as you already mentioned, and the Boots of Travel on the Tinker. I'm actually fairly concerned for the Banner Earth side. Their Death Prophet is level 9, so at the moment she's at a peak of at one of her peaks of pushing. Top lane in the meantime, Echo Slam has been committed onto Fan of Soyon. Rail, the Railgun still has a Chronosphere, but it's not even necessary as they do manage to trap the Viper and kill him. Death Prophet needs to be pushing towers. She only used her ultimate once so far, and really it didn't do that much in the bottom lane teamfight. Maybe top she gets something done, especially now that she has a haste in bottle, but they're going to go in once again. The Chronosphere is going to be dropped. The Skyrath Mage is going to drop first, but they're going to secure a kill onto CSO, and then a following up with that laser railgun. Dropping pretty low, but there's nothing else that Banner Earth have to actually kill off the Spaceless Void. It's 15 to 4, and Tengen are slowly but surely pulling ahead. Yeah, the teamfight execution is just been very good this game and well you see the global presence coming out from the team with the invoker sun strikes as well as the tinker tps in i don't know people are just dying so quickly even though they're naturally tanky with their extra magic resistance as well as the omni knight on their team it just doesn't seem to matter they catch them out solo and outside of 5v5 team fight they're not going to have that power viper rushing towards that pipe he's going to have it probably about the same time they have the mechanism online for the death prophet i don't know it'll help them be tanky and i don't know try to take those team fights, but in the end, I'm not sure if it's going to be enough against what Tengen are going to be bringing to these team fights with the Blink Dagger complete at 13 minutes for this Tinker. Uh, on top of that, uh, the Tinker and Invoker are remaining rather neck and neck as far as farm. Huge item in the Boots of Travel being picked up from the Invoker. All the while that bottom or top lane fight was happening, the Invoker was split pushing with Forge Spirits, and he could continue to do that now that he has those travels. He could join the fight at a moment's notice and, you know, throw out the Sun Strike if that's all the commitment they need. They're going to set up a trap for Railgun Banner Earth up on top side, but he has a level 4 time walk, and unless they get a dismember off, they will not be able to kill off Railgun. Well, they get the dismember off, and they'll be able to kill off Railgun. Easy peasy, a kill on the face is void, but still they have to worry about this Invoker, who's going to slowly start to get out of hand. Who's to travel's Hand of Midas? Is it going to be a Yule Scepter, do you think, or potentially an Orchid for the Invoker? Um, 
I would think that it's going to be neither, possibly even a Necrobook. I don't know. Okay. Between the two, well, up top, not going to have time to speak as they get a hook onto the Tinker and blow him up with their combo. Uh, so, well, I don't know. I think the way that the Invoker is playing, especially uh, just split pushing down these lanes, a Necrobook would be a solid pickup for him. Uh, out of the two, I think I would favor Yule's Scepter. Just the extra mobility, especially on an Exhort Invoker, would be very good. Can set up Sun Strikes as well solo. Uh, either way, they're going to jump in. Time walk on the Rubik gets a lift onto the Skyrath Mage. They don't have a left follow up, however. And, well, they're fighting behind the tier 1, and now the tier 1 is going to fall towards the end of that. That's an ambitious time walk from Rubik. You rarely see that skill stolen by that hero, but jumping forward like that is awfully dangerous on such a soft hero as All Rubik. Fan of He's, He's stuck behind off. the tier 2 tower, a hook, it's not going to land, Scarth Mage ulti is also going to miss Phantom Soin, however is bashed, he's going to be purified up to give him an extra damage, he's under tower, Face of Soin is going to be forced back, Phantom Soin just so tanky, they commit the Echo Slam to this as well, Guardian Angel deployed, DB from the Tinker, Echo Slam stolen by the Rubik, he's going to be able to drop it on the Earthshaker, poor Earthshaker is going to be the cost of that fight, and it looks like Ban Earth Spirit are going to be able to 5 man down this tier 2 tower and bottom, but in the meantime, Invoker just doesn't care, he's going under the tier 3. Rubik's yeah, gonna tell yeah, Rubik's gonna teleport back and try to defend that, but Invoker if he really feels up to it, he could kill that Rubik if he wants to fully engage. Uh Noobs are us on the sidelines, gonna start laying down some march, but already the pipe picked up a very quick one by the Viper is going to ensure that everyone is rather healthy as they take down the entirety of the outer towers on the Tengen top side, and then they'll successfully fall back safely. Ryan Noob will also be forced back. Seeing as though there is now someone in his lane to contest with, then you're right, it is going to be that Necrobook. So a little bit more pushing power down on that bottom lane. Looks like the Invoker is going to play the Broodmother role in this particular game. Yeah, I don't know, and with the Boots of Travel, I think he can definitely do so. He'll still have his teamfight combos as soon as he gets some more uh, levels up in Invoke, so he can ensure that he gets all of those spells off. Tinker's just going back to farming down in bottom. There's not really anywhere that he's needed. Hook was fishing coming out from the Pudge. Um... Not sure that they had a ward vision down there. I think he saw the Tinker walk up the ramp, just expecting him to be there. Uh, but in the end, Noobs Ross will not be snagged. Uh, what do you think uh, the build for the Tinker is going to be this game? I mean, he already has his Blink Dagger up. Going for Dagon, Ethereal Blade, or Sheep, the distinction is going to be rather Smoke small. Smoke on the Tinker. He blinks he away. Jumped. No telekinesis in time. Actually, the Centaur Stomp going to slow down A and it would have killed him if not for the mech. He's still going to drop very low, down to 50 HP sitting in that March. Sunstrike with missiles. There you go, Ryan Noob with that satellite cannon is going to kill off the Rubik. And the Mystic Flare now onto Alex will not bring him down. 80 HP, what is with everyone surviving at such low amounts of HP? Platinum trying to juke out the hook will not be successful. CSO secures that kill. Another two kills for Ban Earth. The rest of the team, however, going to initiate onto Phantasoya and dropping the Chronosphere only onto this Viper. They're certainly going to kill him. There's no follow-up from this Pudge or Omnid. However, Pudge has another hook, will throw it, will just barely miss that face Void. And he's going to get fissured. He's going to be brought down as a double kill. For this invoker. That's a level 2 book if he really wants it. And yeah, Death Prophet a... in the meantime is going to escape. Yeah, I don't know, that was a really interesting Chronosphere. Didn't actually hit the Viper and then Viper walked into it. Um, I don't know, that could have been a complete whiff, but in the end, a good team fight win for Tengen yet again. Just the farm that they're able to pick up in these team fights is showing that they have the advantage. I don't know, I think Invoker could have saved his Sunstrike there as uh, Tinker had the vision for his rockets and was able to throw that and maybe that little bit of extra damage could have picked off the Death Prophet later on in the fight. But still, a solid win for them. Unfortunately, there is no Tier 2 tower to take down the bottom lane as Invoker made uh, short work of that one earlier on. But in the end, still a solid teamfight win and going to secure themselves the Blink Dagger on the Earthshaker at a decent time. And we'll have the Echo Slime available as well. I'm getting more and more concerned for the Panther side. Again, the Death Prophet has taken down the entirety of the top lane, but in doing so, she hasn't actually used Exorcism to take down those towers. Mid lane is very healthy, bottom lane not so much. But they still have yet to really push with this Death Prophet, and that's really what you want to be doing. She's level 11 now, so her pushing is not going to get that much stronger from here on out. At this point, Tinker has level 4 March of the Machines, is going to go for what looks like a Dagon. So he's going to be able to defend these towers pretty easily, but Ban Earth with this Death Prophet pickup, she's going to start to fall off if she doesn't start to do something pretty soon. She needs that gold advantage, not only for herself, but for the rest of the team. These Tier 1 towers are giant bags of gold that Ban Earth simply cannot cash in yet. Yeah, for sure. I don't know, Ban Earth Spirit trying to play aggressively with this Pudge, but it's not going to net them any kills as Tinker just TPs away. They're kind of sitting around, but the uh, camps have already been farmed. Oh, they're looking for it. They don't find the Tinker with the hook, but the Silence will land. They know he's here. Will they have enough vision? It looks like he's going to be able to get it out. Where's the Blink? Blink to the north. Noobs are us. Looks like he's going to be just fine. Actually drops a Marching Machine as they're juking through. We'll do a little harass. Another Blink. And another Rearm, actually. Probably going to throw out another March. I don't know. That March is actually going to do nothing. 
In the end, Tier 1 Tower is going to be taken by Ban Earth. No kills uh, going the way, and that is only a Tier 1 Tower. In the meantime, uh, up top, Rai Noob continuing to a split push away as Broodmother Invoker. Well, Marches aren't laid down near this Tier 2 Tower, and with the level 2 Exorcism, Death Prophet should be able to take this tower fairly quickly. TP attempt from the Void is going to be cancelled. Didn't want to be caught out. Scarth Mage ulti deployed onto Death Prophet, but it's going to uh, miss the majority of the damage. Hook coming out from the Pudge. A lot of spells are going to be missed, and Tier 2 Tower looks like it's going to fall without any real initiation. Faces Void is coming in for the North, has a Chronosphere, and actually has gone for a Yasha Blade of Alacrity? That's uh, something I definitely haven't seen before, so... Maybe Aghanim Scepter after Ayasha after some indecision, but uh, they do take the entirety of the bottom lane, exactly what Ban Earth are going to be looking to do with that Death Prophet pick. Uh, the Invoker did manage to take down a top tier 1 tower uh, as the uh, split from the split push, but uh, losing a tier 1 and a tier 2 in exchange for just tier 1, not really worth it. And Ban Earth, they're going to be looking for more. This pressure that Pudge puts on during these pushes is uh, not really what, you, what Pudge is known for, but is something that he does offer. Constantly, the threat of those hooks makes it very difficult for Tangan to defend these towers. Yeah, definitely. Back on that Blade of Alacrity on the Faceless Void, it is going to be a Defusal Blade up against the Omni Knight as he has picked up a second one. It's definitely good to be able to take the BKB off of the hero uh, to make sure that they're able to focus him down as a lot of their damage is premised on uh, the ability to drop magic damage burst with the Scarth Mage. And Well, Tinkler is going to continue farming up after picking up that Dagon. I presume he's going to pick up an Ethereal Blade uh, next, or maybe level up the Dagon once or twice before he does so. Um, Ethereal Blade's a very useful item to have against Death Prophet, seeing as our Exorcism Spirits do physical damage, so Ticker really gets into a sticky situation. I don't think it's going to ultimately save him, just because the situations are going to be extremely sticky, but uh, Exorcism, it's you know some pretty good protection with that Ethereal form, but yeah, Ban Earth, they're going to look for round two in the pushing. Exorcism is up in seven seconds, they probably don't want to use it on a tier one tower, they may or may not have a choice, however. Yeah, I don't know. We'll have to see. With these marches, it's going to be very annoying to push up against, but they do have the pipe deployed on the creep wave, which will keep it alive at least for now. Death Prophet Ultimate is going to be used for his tier 1, and they should secure this tower. I don't know. Pudge fishing for it. Blink away from the Earthshaker, and Pudge Hook going to be wide uh, off the mark, and tier 1 tower is just going to be forfeit by Tengen. Radiance mid -towers getting Tengen really do have everything that they need to fight right now. I just think that's the fact that they don't necessarily need or want to fight right now. If they wanted to jump in with the Chronosphere, then they probably could have taken a pretty good fight. But uh, going to sack that Tier 1 tower, they're still holding on to one Tier 2 outer tower. And, uh, well, the Banner side holding on to two of them, which are slowly being ratted down by this Invoker. He's getting himself quite a bit of income. He's actually sitting at 607 gold per minute. His net worth is extremely high at 13,000. Level 3 book, and if he finds someone with a cold snap or anything like that, between the Forge Spirits and the Dyer's book top, Necro Units, the down. target is definitely going to drop in a hurry. Yeah, I don't know. Despite his KDA of 9, 1, and 2, this Invoker has been fairly quiet for the last couple minutes of the game, as his team has pretty much just been avoiding the uh, fights. While we have a little bit of uh, Calm the Storm, I'll take this time to look at the graphs. Uh, the gold advantage is about 5,000 in favor of Tengen, mostly in the pockets of the Tinker as well as Invoker, and experiences vastly in their favor, mostly due to their uh, kill score advantage of 18 to 8. Uh, well, for now they're just going to start splitting up and farming. We do have a, an Invisibility Rune on the Earthshaker, just going to get some intel. Doesn't look like they're going to initiate. Well, they're collapsing onto the Viper. They might be able to find an opening here. They see him, and they've already shown that they want, they can commit a Chronosphere if need be, but Mystic Flare Dagon, that'll do it. Hook oh. onto Railgun, he's going to be dismembered, but he's not taking that much damage. Purification will drop him very low, and they will take him down. Rubik has stolen time off, so he could reinitiate if he really wants to. But it looks like a one-for-one -one trade. Uh, it's going to be a fairly even one. Invoker, in the meantime, still pushing out that top lane. Ryan Noob has only died once in this game, and he's been putting so much pressure on the Ban Earth base. They can't push out because they have to deal with this Invoker. Yeah, and Tier 2 Tower looks like it's going to die with Alacrity on that Necrominian Warrior. It's just as too much damage for them to save that. And that's uh, pretty much... I don't know, the rest of the map control being arrested from Ban Earth. They still have the Tier 2 Tower in mid lane, but they just don't have great tools to... Um, use their own jungle, and it's very scary, as you saw, really, they don't need a lot of the heroes to get those pickoffs, as long as they have, like, I don't know, the Faceless Void or the Earthshaker in the vicinity, they have the Invoker or Tinker that can TP in, or TP in, and, I don't know, just great ways that they can damage them. Ban Earth, they're going to oh. slowly start to assemble in the mid lane as they throw another hook, which Noobs RS will manage to avoid for now. 
Uh, taking a quick look at the item progression from Banner, there hasn't really been that much. Death Prophet has the very crucial Yule Scepter, popping off Exorcism and then flying yourself into the air, protect yourself from a little bit of damage is certainly nice. Omnite has been going for what looks like the Aghanim Scepter on him for quite a while, though he hasn't really gotten any income since I last checked. Rubik almost with the four staff. So these items are slowly being built up from Ban Earth, but nothing is really coming into completion. In the meantime, Noobs are us. He's packing a Dagon and a Ghost Scepter. The Diffusal Blade, as you mentioned before, do burn off that Repel on Omni Knight. Not too sure how big a deal that's going to be, considering the fact that they do have a uh, Chronosphere to work with, but it may or may not uh, be a big item, depending on the positioning. But still, Ryan Noobs up on top. He's at 4,800 Gs. He might be going for a Sheepstick. The Courier is at the Secret Shop. I definitely think Cheap Stick would be a solid item. You might even decide to go back for a Blink Dagger afterwards, just to have that Blink Hex initiation. Uh, but, I don't know, with the items that he's gone for, especially with the Hand of Midas, your slots are uh, fairly low, so you might not even go for that. He's just going to get some chip damage onto this Tier 3 tower, uh, summoning all of his units, Pipe Forced out by the Viper, trying to avoid as much damage as possible, but still going to get about a third on that T3. Pipe actually doesn't do anything there except for block against mana burn. the mana burn. Yeah, I don't know, hook onto the invoker. They're going to time walk in, echo slam on it too with the fissure follow up. Ow, they won't be able to get the enchant, totem off and four staff on the punch, we'll be able to keep them safe and now the Omni Knight ultimate also comes out. Urshaker going to be the cost of this attempted at a gank. Yule Scepter not going to block the um, actual hook but will block the damage but it's not going to be enough as a huge spree is spent the way of the Death Prophet. Chronosphere drop by the faceless void, they're going to be able to burst down this Death Prophet it seems. Will it be enough damage? He doesn't get enough bashes and the Purify is going to keep the DP safe. Three heroes dead on the side of Tengen. But the Tinker jumps in with that Ethereal Blade. He didn't even need to use the Dagon, but now he might be in a little bit of trouble trying to get himself out to safety with Repel. He blows up the Rubik as well. Just look at the nuking damage coming out from the Ethereal Blade. Hasn't even needed to use uh, the Dagon once. Pudge dies on the back lines to the Skyrath Mage mostly, and Skyrath Mage is going to escape with very little HP and absolute bloodbath here in the dire uh, jungle. That looked like such a bad fight for Tengen, having to drop a Face Void Chronosphere onto only one target that ultimately didn't even die even though you landed the Mystic Flare. I mean, the Death Prophet did die, but didn't die within the duration of the Chronosphere. Then having the Tinker just come in at the last second and clean everyone up, the Tank inside end up taking a edge in that fight, which is something I definitely would not have expected, seeing as though that fight started off that poorly for them. But, uh, you know, they take a decent fight, they bring the tower down to about half HP, and if they can continue to do that, well then Tinker is going to get this Dagon up to level 5 in a hurry. And then potentially could look towards a Sheep Stick of his own. It looks like the Invoker has actually opted to go for no items just yet. Still is at 4,900 Gs. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure exactly what Ryanoob is considering as far as his item choices are concerned. I don't know, pretty much the shop is his oyster. Let's see what he's going to buy. He's sitting over by the secret shop and he picks himself up an Agadem Scepter completed and... Well, I don't know, the way he's been using his spells, he hasn't had the teamfight combos available uh, when he jumps in as far as invokes are concerned, and we're going to be seeing a lot of spell sling, especially with the early uh, Hand of Midas that he was able to pick up in lane. He's going to hit level 25 sooner rather than later, and also gives him some good take. I don't know, Skyrath Mage just got picked off by a hook uh, from the Pudge. Yeah, that was just a four staff hook dismember, and Skyrath Mage was caught in the uh, narrow alley where the rune usually spawns, so not much room to juke there, so it's an easy kill. For the Pudge, going to give him a little bit more gold, more importantly, I guess a little bit more strength, as he's now up to plus 11 with only level 1 in that flesh heap. But the uh, Broodmo Broodmother Invoker is back up on top lane, and Ban Earth are going to try to take down Roshan. Will be scouted very quickly by the, a, an Invoker Sunstrike, but with the Omni Knight on the field and Exorcism up, they should be able to secure this Roshan with very, relatively low stress. And yeah, Tengen aren't even going to start to mobilize towards that, although now they're going. It's a little bit too late. Exum has already been engaged, but if they take a fight after Exum, it could be pretty good for them, potentially. Well, for now, they're just going to back off after all of the TPs have been expended. Although, with the Boots of Travel on the Tinker, as well as the Invoker, you should be able to uh, get back to his split pushing as soon as he wants to. As an Invisibility Rune available, and Tinker is going to pick up the slack in top for now. Um, Age is secured by uh, Ban Earthspirit. I'm not sure how much it actually means. They did give it the way of the Viper, a tanky hero that's going to be difficult to take down once. And then twice, but still, I don't know, it's um, not the best Aegis carry, although he can put out a lot of damage on the second life once people get low. Uh, can I get your quick reaction on Skyrath Mage's items right now? Let's see. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, it wasn't apparently obvious uh, what the recipe in his inventory goes for a hand of Midas. I guess he's taken it to 70 minutes, I don't know. Like, super late game Ethereal Blade Skyrath Mage, maybe? I don't know. I've never seen this before, especially this late on a Skyrath Mage. 
Yeah, generally not the hero that I think you'd get a late hand of Midas on, especially at 30 minutes uh, thereabouts. I, <laughs> I have no idea. I mean, if you want the um, Ethereal Blade, possibly just saving up for it, you'd get it faster. But I guess this way, if they do uh, take this late, Tengen will be in a good situation either way. Uh, as said earlier on in the draft, Invoker Faces Void Tinker late game is ridiculous, especially up against uh, the lineup that Ban Earth Spirit have. Really, the only hero that scales particularly well late is that Death Prophet, and even the Death Prophet starts scaling off at 45 minutes thereabouts. Um, so, I guess they're taking it as late as they need it. Uh, even if they start losing a lot of these fights very um, convincingly, the Tinker can still turtle to his heart's content. Pushing high ground is no easy feat, especially up against the Earthshaker Tinker. Yeah, on the banner side, they they would on paper also have a Viper for a little bit of late game damage, but he hasn't had a good game at all. He's sitting at 0, 5, and 3. Pipe into almost a Manta, or almost something that looks like a Manta, is going to be the build for Viper. So he's not going to be able to contribute that much. No Aghanims on him, not for a long time. Omni is going to pick up a little bit of that slack and picking up now the completed Aghanim Scepter. I look away for one minute and he has a point booster. Suddenly an Aghanim Scepter is up. So a little bit more Guardian Angel presence, so he'll be able to cast that, and no matter what, they will get a little bit of protection. Ryan is going to be forced down back to the mid lane, though. He'll leave top to the Forge Spirits, because Ban Earth, they're pushing. They're looking for a fight. Yeah, they'll pop the uh, pipe, as well as uh, the Exorcism, trying to get this Tier 2 tower down in the middle lane as fast as possible. And it looks for now they're not going to initiate, but there goes the hook coming up from the punch with the Vendor follow-up on Ryan Noob. The Purification's going to be off the mark. Will they be able to chase him down? There goes the Cronus for Ultimate, as well as the Skyrath Mage. Fan of Soyan's caught under the tower. He's silenced up, but they're not going to be able to focus him down. Force half in for Rubik. It's going to be a Thurial Blade Dagon just blown up in two shots. From the Tinker. Repel is going to be thrown out on the Omni Knight. For now, we have a Meteor thrown out by the Invoker. Not really going to land on much of anything. They purify up Phantasaurian. Does some decent pure damage. It looks like Phantasaurian is going to lose his Aegis. Echo Slam committed. Only catching out the Viper, unfortunately. Just look at the damage coming out from the Pudges. Right onto the, um... Uh, uh, Excuse me, Earthshaker. Uh, lost my voice there for a second. Face is full, going time walk down to the low ground, avoiding the purification coming out from the Omni Knight. Noobs RS is in a bit of trouble, doesn't have a lot of mana to speak up, but will be able to Ethereal Blade the um, Viper and TV out to safety. Well, slow onto the Omni Knight, and no other follow up. Yeah, a very interesting fight. The Tier 2 Tower is going to go down at the end of the day, but Tengen should still be fairly happy with that. I don't know that Tier 2 Tower doesn't mean a whole lot at this point in the game. Honestly, I have no idea how the Faces Void managed to get out from that. After that purification, dropping him, dropping, him dropping him down so low, I would have thought for sure he would have dropped. But uh, Tinker in that fight did so much damage. Like, he unloaded several Ethereal Blades, several Dagon Blasts. Oh, Blast. Death Prophet. Now he's going to go to town again onto Death Prophet. Oh, she's Echo going keep to... keep her up, and he should be safe. Although, Viper Strike, he's going to try to TP out. Not going to happen. This is going to be the death of the Tinker. And rearm stolen by Rubik. Such a useful skill. Well, he will be able to spam out those Fade Bolts and push the waves, yeah. I don't know, without... I mean, if the Rubik had a Scythe of Ice, uh, that would be an awesome pickup, but yeah, we're not seeing that farm coming out from the Rubik. Usually, um, the Tinker actually doesn't have buyback, so Ban Earth, they have Exorcism up. This could be their chance to get Raxes. Yeah, definitely. If there ever was a time, it's now Earthshaker Ultimate still on cooldown for about another 50 seconds. Pudge might be looking for a hook. They get the Fissure Blink away from the Earthshaker, keeping himself safe. Oh, Pudge went fishing, not going to be able to find anybody. Radiance, mid -towers coming Exorcism pop by Alex, and here comes the Siege. Yeah, yeah jump in from the Faces Void. Gonna get a two-man Chronosphere, then the Mystic Flare, then the Meteor. Can they kill off this Death Prophet? They will. No more Earth, no more Exorcism Spirits going to be flying around just yet. The Rubik also going to drop in the meantime. They don't have their Tinker, but it looks like Tengen. They don't need it. They take a beautiful Chronosphere. They take a beautiful fight. The Tornado will catch out. The Omnite will be hooked back out to safety. Jump forward from Tunerla, has another Fissure, will land on two, but Vanasoy in the meantime can be focused by Railgun. Will pop off the Manta and Railgun, trying to run away, will be dropped. Ryan Noob will also try to take on the Viper, that's not going to happen either. Tunerla in the meantime, can get things turned around, CSO as well as Glacius going to turn things around on him. And Tengen extending a little bit too far, the Tinker is back in this fight potentially. He's going to jump right in and look for a target, but I don't think he's going to find anyone. Yeah, a very interesting engagement. And yeah, as a Tinker, you really don't want to be cut out without buyback point for the Ethereal Blade on the Omni Knight, but it purified himself, so had enough health uh, in order to get out of there. And as a Tinker, at this point in the game, you don't want to be caught out of buyback, and I think not upgrading your uh, Dagon to level 3 just in case, or level 4, excuse me, would have been a better option for Noobs RS, but in the end, it wasn't punished that hard. Yeah, Tengen had a pretty good team fight in that last one, and before the team fight actually started, Ryan Noob 
was, uh, of course, doing his split push stuff with the Forge Spirits. He brought the bottom lane tower fairly low, sitting at 340 uh, HP. So next time the Invoker has a chance to do something like that, the tower almost certainly is going to be brought down by his summons. Noobs are us is going to hide in the trees for now. He's going to go for initiation onto Pudge. He needs another blast, and he will be able to secure the Pudge for free and then teleport his way back. Tinker doing Tinker things. Yeah, I don't know, Ryan Noob. He picks up a very interesting item with the uh, Hyperstone. I assume that's going to be complete assault cuirass for his team. And indeed it is. Up against the Death Prophet Ultimate, a very solid pickup, and honestly one of the items that every team would like to have. And with Faceless Void's current farm, there's no way that he's going to be completing that, and Invoker has farmed a spare. He was sitting on a casual 6,000 gold uh, just a second bo ago before he one-shot bought an assault cuirass. Yeah, uh, Hyperstone into Mjolnir is also something that something that Invoker can do. Uh, this game, obviously, it's too late because he already has the Assault Caress, but definitely seen it before. The Static Charge is certainly very useful, and it lets Invoker put out some pretty good right-click damage when, when he has uh, Alacrity on himself and all the Exhort Orbs flying above his head. He'll be able to bring down people, so it might be something he wants to go for if he wants to go for a little bit more of a combat Invoker build, and he might want to go for that, just completely omit any sort of Sheep Stick, which I don't really know how I feel about that, but it's definitely a possibility. He's going to drop a rock and continue to split push this top lane for Span Earth to back off. It would also help him push out those side lanes uh, very effectively with the um, uh, chain lightning effect going onto those creeps, and I'm not sure that Ryan Noob really needs it. Uh, to be honest, I think the utility coming out from the Hex would be a better second item. We'll have to see if he wants to transition into a little bit more right-click as the game progresses. It doesn't look like it's going to stop anytime soon. Neither team really making any aggressive movements uh, towards the enemy's high ground for quite some time. We're going to see when Roshan's going to respawn just a couple of seconds as we do hit the uh, bare minimum time. And, well, for now, everybody's just going to back off. Tinker, bring up some camps, send some illusions over towards the enemy ancients. It should be fairly obvious that there are illusions and one purification and a couple auto attacks coming out from the Omni Knight. He's still hanging on to that Orb of Venom. We'll secure this. From the looks of the draft from Banner, you wouldn't really expect that this game would be dragging on in such a, in such a way. But uh, ultimately, it does favor, most of all, the Skywrath Mage with his Hand of Midas. He's going to be so rich. He's holding on to a Staff of Wizardry, so he's going to be able to put out some pretty heavy damage later on. And Well, with the Tinker and Invoker slowly going to be split pushing down their respective lanes, it's going to get a little bit uncomfort uncomfortable for Banner. They're probably just going to wait for Roshan and then trying, and they'll, they will try to make some action happen, uh, probably in the mid lane once again, as the tower is fairly low from the last push. But uh, it, they've proven Tengen that they can defend, even though their face is void. Not getting that much farm. He's gone for the Diffusal Blade, Yasha, sitting at 3,000, most, cer most certainly holding money for buyback, but he's not actually putting that much damage out. It's mostly in the Tinker and Evoker where the damage is coming out from. Yeah. Uh, pretty much sums that up. Honestly, I probably would have liked to face this Void late Midas rather than the Skyrath Mage. Um, but still, what do you think the Skyrath Mage is building with that uh, Staff of Wizardry? A plethora of options for him. I'm kind of leaning towards Atos. That's usually the most common, as he does pick up the second Staff of Wizardry, so congratulations, you are correct. Being able to slow someone down with mist and then lay down a Mystic Flare is absolutely devastating, though it is a little bit late for that. Usually we see a Rod of Atos being picked up a little bit earlier. Uh, generally when Skyrath Mage gets a little bit more farm or early game kills or something, you see that a lot earlier. Uh, it's still relevant. Level 2 Mystic Flare does a ton of damage, but uh, this slow is going to be a little bit less relevant because, well, I mean, people like Death Prophet are walking around with 2400 health, and Banner Earth, they have a pipe and everything like that, so... It's uh, it's still a good item, but it's a little bit late. Yeah, definitely holds true. I think it's still okay for them, uh, especially the way these fights have been going. They're very spread out, and especially after the Omni Knight gets taken down or otherwise removed from the team fight, um, it's still going to be good for chasing down those last couple of kills. But Bandit or Spirit gonna smoke their way into the Roshan pit. I don't think this is going to be spied out by Tengen here, as they don't really have great vision around the Roshan, but they have this ward, but even if they weren't smoked, it wouldn't have caught vision of them, and with Exorcism, a very quick Roshan, give away the Viper. It's an Aegis for Viper, he can buy up the BKB, and it will be flown out to him immediately. That means he has no buyback, but Ban Earth, they're actually getting some pretty nice items up, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, BKB on Viper, BKB also being picked up on Pudge, so he'll be able to rot to his heart's content, this member is going to be pretty safe aside from bashes and chronospheres. It looks like top oh. lane. Give initiation onto the Death Prophet. Will Yules and save herself from Fissure as well as that Deafening Blast, but unfortunately it's not going to be enough. In the meantime, Viper though, picking up the Tinker in the bottom end. This member has been used for that one. 
And everyone else from Tengen, they have to run though. Tunerla probably not gonna be as lucky. We'll drop a Echo Slam. Here comes the Tinker, and Ryan Oop's still in the area. We'll drop an Ice Wall. Tinker going to reconsider, and everyone else should back off. I don't know, Skyrath Mage drops an ulti on one and kills the Rubik with the other. Two for two Ooh. trades so far. Now the uh, Chronosphere comes out from the Faceless Void, catches out all three. They get the Aegis off the Viper to start things off. Possibly not the best hero, but Glacius looks like he's also going to die. Will the physical damage be there? With the Repel, he's going to keep himself safe. They're not going to purge that one off, and in the end, the Faceless Void is going to be the one to die. Rhino being slowed down by the Poison Attack, as well as the Rock coming out from the Pungent. There's just nowhere to run. He does have Invoke coming off of cooldown fairly shortly. I think he has Ghost Rock, and he'll just be fine. Has two dismembers in the duration of one fight. It has a relatively low cooldown for ultimate. 30 seconds on dismember, and he got himself a kill early on in the tinker. Getting himself another one on the faces void. Certainly very helpful. And Omni Knight somehow managing to slip out on you know without having to actually take the trip back to the grave. Uh, it's gonna be really nice for a banner because they'll have the Death Prophet back up. She will have her exorcism spirits up. And they'll have an an opening to do something. However, they do lose their Aegis, which I mean, I think they would rather lose the Aegis than their real life, but still not not exactly the cleanest fight for Ban Earth, seeing as though their Death Prophet got picked off first thing, even though they did get Tinker pretty quickly in response. Yeah, I, don't know. I think inside that Chronosphere, they could have focused on a different target other than the Viper. He's already tanky to begin with, doesn't do a lot of damage outside of them, or after he uh, comes back. And so I think... Yeah, focusing on another target, whether it be an Omni Knight, to make sure that he's not able to keep the other heroes alive, and if they feel confident enough to take down the Pudge, maybe even go for him. Now Pudge looking for a initiation on someone. The rest of his team is right behind him. They're going to be completely spotted, so there are going to be no surprises here. He's going to go for a little bit of a fish attempt. Won't find anyone, but it uh, looks like everyone's on the mid lane, so you might as well push, I suppose. They're not going to achieve any sort of timing. The Earthshaker will have a Echo Slam back up by the time this reaches the base, and especially if he lays down a Fissure beforehand. Refresher Orb, though, being picked up from this Invoker. There's going to be a lot of rocks raining from the sky, I predict. Yeah, I would say that's a fair prediction as well. I'd assume a six item is going to be Scythe of Vice, but we might not have time for this. The Siege is going to get Exorcism jumps out. They're going to get the Chronosphere only on two, however, they're going to be able to lift up the Pudge, but he still gets the hook off onto the Death Prophet. He'll be able to get the um, Exorcism off. Echo Slam doesn't really do a lot of damage as the BKBs are already coming out. Only the initial take does damage. Garth Mage is going to be focused down earlier on. The Dagon comes out. We'll be able to get the Rubik at the very least. Here comes their first Meatball. No refresh used by the Invoker just yet. And for now, it's going to calm down. They get the hook onto the face of Void. Time walks away, however, no way to lock him down. They're going to force that forward. Slowing down Railgun, they'll be able to get one more auto attack on him. Buyback from the Faces Void doesn't have a Chronos for the second time around and won't be able to jump back in. They might not have enough in the tank. They're going to drop an EMP Tornado combo oh. in mid, but they hook back Ryanoob. Where's the damage here? They time walk in the Faces Void, but he just doesn't do any damage. Now here comes the damage. Omni Knight focused down by the Tinker, and the retreat's going to come out from Ban Earth Spirit. He's looking for more. They get the Death Prophet low. The Sun Strike going to be off the mark, but the second round of Dagon is going to be too much for Death Prophet to handle. Tengen successfully defend their Raxes, though it looked really bad for them. Rubik had a huge steal in that Chronosphere. It only caught one, but that was the Invoker. So he disrupted the entirety of the Invoker's uh, rhythm in that fight. He held him out, so the Aghanim Scepter essentially did nothing for the Invoker for the gr great duration of that fight. So beautiful steal from the Banner side, and then held Guardian Angel until the point where both the physical invulnerability as well as the regeneration, providing a lot of value for the Banner side, but yet... The Tinker had time to respawn, and he doesn't have buyback for another two minutes, but he was there at the last final hour to do the damage that was necessary for Tengen, and they hold on to their axes, which is going to be the most important thing. Now they crack back, going to be taking down this tier 2 tower should be relatively easy for them, especially since they have a Chronosphere, will drop it immediately onto the Viper, and they will take out the Rubik as well. Hook onto Chinerla, he will get dismembered as well, they'll take out the Viper, and Noobs are going to jump forward for the Ethereal Blade combo onto the Pudge, he'll force staff himself into the trolls. The trolls do not like visitors and well actually everyone's gonna jump up as Pudge jumps away. Somehow that worked out and Pudge manages to live. Okay. Reminiscent of a clip from Fails from the Week. Everybody just kind of jumps onto the cliff as uh, Pudge casually blinks towards the north. In the end the push isn't going to stop here with the Viper down. They're going to force out the buyback as well as the glyph and I think it's time to get out of there from Tangan. And it looks like they will back off. T uh, Tinker TP is in one more, drops a march that's not going to hit very many creeps, if any at all. And, yeah. I'd say that's a successful push from Tengen. Tengen are very reliant on this Chronosphere now to actually fight. If the Faces Void had an Aghanims, I think uh, I would feel a lot better for Tengen. Of course, it'll put a lot more pressure then onto the Invoker, as well as the Tinker to deliver the damage. So, you know, can't really fault the Faces Void for going for a very, very awkward Naga Siren-esque build. 
uh, kind of unconventional there, but he, even though he may not be doing the most damage in the world, having that Chronosphere to line up a perfect Mystic Flare, Sunstrike, what have you, is going to be absolutely huge for Tangy. And if they take a fight without Chronosphere, it's probably not going to go well for them. Yeah, I don't know. Currently, uh, the Faceless Void's build is a little bit awkward. Um, but, yeah, I think an Aghanim Scepter would have been good earlier on, but at this point, they only have 80 seconds cooldown on mm -hmm. the Chronosphere, so it's not that big of a deal. I still think they'll have it for every fight. Uh, but instead of going for the casual Yasha, possibly picking up the points of the, um, or parts of the Aghanim Scepter, and then building the Diffusal Blade a little bit later, uh, might have been a better option. The Diffusal Blade's running low on charges, um... But he will be able to rebuy the recipe and have those available for the next couple of fights. I don't know if I've just been missing it, but I haven't seen any huge value from Diffusal Blade. Maybe it's just because he's been so quick on it and Repel hasn't oh. been working. Although Railgun oh. going to get Latch with the hook and Dismember. Can they burst him down? He's going to get Silence. He will Manta and dodge the Purification. Not sure if that was the Manta dodge or the backtrack. Either way, they're going to drop a Chronosphere only onto A, however. And they'll get the Sunstrike to secure the kill as well. Tunerla will get hooked out and will drop the Exclam before he dies, but he will go down. The Meteor will fly through as Ryanu does line up another Meteor. He's now going to get Cyclone up into the air. Earthshaker is going to buy back. Where's the Tinker in this? Here he comes. Is going to secure one for the team. And he sees Phanasoyon as well as CSO trying to run away. Is there a Tornado? to catch up with this Pudge and Viper combo. It looks like Noobs are going to jump forward one more time. Going for the Pudge is a little bit hard. He's going to hook onto a Forward Spear. Glacius trying to get in the way. CSO taking so much damage with the Magic Fistons that he does have. Sunstrike, second one, will be thrown. And another Fissure will wall off Glacius. Can they go for him? They need a Tinker to do the damage. He's going to blink back home. Yeah, a very interesting team fight. They've kind of just been building off of these little pickoffs here and there. All said and done fairly... Even, I would say, nobody's going to be able to translate that into a push into high ground. They cost themselves a buyback on the Earthshaker, I believe, that was the only one spent in that team fight, And it looks like that is the case. Uh, but still, not the best, not the worst for Tangan. Same for Ban Earth Spirit. Uh, losing a Death Prophet there, not ideal, but still no uh, huge damage done. That Pudge is starting to get really tanky as these Flesh Heap stacks start uh, stacking up, as well as just the innate tankiness with that extra magic resist. Plus 50 strength is a dangerous amount like this guy is really really big even if his health pool appears him to be at about one fourth hp that's still a whole bunch of hit points so if anyone on tangan whether it be tinker or the invoker want to kill this pudge they're going to i think most likely focus on everyone else first would be the wise decision pudge at this point has a lot more health than he does threat so you could essentially ignore the pudge for a good while and take the rest of his teammates out well, Ryan Noob at this point should probably just open up a bank. He has enough money to finish up the Scythe of Ice and probably still have buyback after a couple more camps. So I'd assume he saves for buyback and then picks up the Scythe, uh, but I think that would be a solid six item for him, unless he wants to transition into more of a right-clicking role, uh, whereas we might see something along the lines of maybe even that Daedalus. There's no one huge that you really want to scythe up. Like, if you get it on Death Prophet, you'll be able to deny her a Yule Scepter or a Shiva's Blast or a Mech or something like that. Well, speaking, speaking of, of Death Alex. Prophet, down in bottom, eats an Ethereal Blade Dagon Blast from a Tinker, but no follow-up for that. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's fine. I was looking at the exact same thing. Uh, they go for a little bit of aggression onto the Death Prophet, the Tinker. Not going to find anything there just yet, so... And having the Hex on the Death Prophet or on the Viper, they're not really putting out that much right-click damage. It's not an absolute necessity to nail them down. Omnit, I would say, is probably the person you would want to hex the most, or catching the, the Chronos here, or something like that. Shutting off that Guardian Angel, shutting off the Repel, is going to be absolutely essential for Tangan if they want to take a convincing fight. Yeah, fair enough. It is going to be a Monkey King bar for the Invoker. Uh, currently not uh, any mischance as far as I can see, but later on the Viper might consider picking himself up a Butterfly and... Uh, more than anything, just a cost-effective damage item going to give him a lot of base damage to deal with, especially when he has Alacrity on his person. With 25 or level 25 already available for Ryan Noob, he's going to be hitting fast and very hard. And those mini stuns are not something we underestimated. Might see some uh, TP cancels with that. It's kind of weird seeing a hero with the both the Monkey King bar and a Refresher Orb. I think Invoker is probably the only hero that you could actually get away with that, and people won't think twice about it. But, you know, one says, I'm going to be casting spells. Another says, I'm going to be hitting you. And wow, Chronosphere gets dropped blind. Railgun, quick on the draw, and got absolutely no one but Roshan. Now fight breaks out. Tangan are going to be on the back foot. Yeah, this is so risky. They actually show themselves out of the smoke. They're going to lift up the Skyrath Mage. They steal the Concussive Shot. They're not the most useful. Blink forward by the Pudge. He's dismembering Ryan Noob, and Ryan Noob looks like he's going to fall. The Skyrath Mage also dies on the other side of the fight. Uh, looks like everybody's just going to be able to get out, but a 
pretty large misplay coming out from the uh, Faceless Void. They're going to cost themselves that team fight as well as Roshan. I don't know, it looks like he shift queued the Chronosphere and just wasn't quick enough to cancel it. I don't know why you would shift Q a Chronosphere. That doesn't seem like a wise decision to me. The Omni Knight did uh, use the Guardian Angel. It's on a pretty high cooldown. It was to prevent any more chip damage from going onto the top tier one, uh, tier three tower. And while well, he was successful in doing so, but now they're going to be pushing without a Guardian Angel. They don't have Exorcism, so I think if they go for it right now, it won't result in the best of fights for them. They're going to be walking into a Tinker who is well on his way to his Sheep Stick. Can buy that one up if he really wants to. But uh, they're going to go for the mid lane, forcing the buyback from the Invoker, possibly will force Banner to back off, seeing as though they probably weren't planning on pushing in the first place. I think that was all they were trying to do, was just to make sure that the Invoker did spend his buyback. Of course, he did have enough gold for it, uh, but we'll be on cooldown for the next fight, and a very costly mistake from Tengen for now is not going to lead into high ground being breached, but a very uh, good step in the right direction for Ban Earth Spirit, with the Cheese as well as Aegis giving their way. Yeah, so they're definitely looking to push eventually, I would say, in about 30 seconds, and they're all gearing up on top side. so perhaps pushing that to deny any more split pushing from the Invoker slash Tanker. The, all the split push that has gone up to, that has gone to the side lanes thus far has more or less been healed by the Omni Knight's uh, Agonimed up Guardian Angel, which does give the buildings a pretty good amount of regeneration. It's no tree and protector in, as far as... Uh, as far as consistency is concerned, but all the chip damage is pretty much gone, so lots of Invoker's hard work down the drain, and now Ban Earth, they are prepped and ready to push, and we'll see if Tangan can mount a substantial defense. Yeah, they will get the Yule Scepter onto the Invoker, Silence will come out as well, but Ryan Hoop is very fast, we'll be able to juke uh, away from the hook, and disaster averted, I guess, but still, Ban Earth Spirit are just going to start 5 manning down this top lane. There's no split push Oh, here. jump in from the face of Void. This Chronosphere is going to be on the mark, but he's hooked outside the Chrono. Scarlet Mage ulti will still land and kill the Death Prophet before she gets Exorcist while they're trying to focus down Phantasol. And Mantis out of the Ethereal Blade, but there it goes yet again. His Bender on the back lines. The Echo Slime comes out from the Invoker, or excuse me, uh, Earthshaker onto three. Stolen uh, Chronosphere coming out from the uh, Rubik. Will stop Phantom Soy and then really hurt his team more than it helped. Scarlet Mage being focused down by the Viper. He will die, but it looks like at the cost of his own life, his three heroes on the side of Ban Earth Spirit are dead, including the Aegis. Wow. Yeah, no buybacks were needed in that fight. Invoker managing to stay alive throughout the entirety of that is instantly going to teleport down to the mid lane and start putting some pressure there. Only Pudge and Omni are here and doing a quick buyback check. The Death Prophet does have buyback. She dropped before she could get her cheese off or anything. She was completely locked down. Viper, though, does not have a buyback. Tengen, they're going to be fighting without their Skywrath Mage, but fighting without the Skywrath Mage is going to be fine, although Ryanu does get hooked and dismembered. Railgun's going to jump forward, does not have a Chrono Spear. The heal can hit Ryanu pretty hard, but he does manage to slip away. CSO is going to drop, as will Glacius. He does get bashed up. He's going to die, and suddenly Pudge is the only one alive. Death Prophet's buyback does get forced. Hook is going to be thrown, just barely missed rain, Railgun. Noobs R.S. going to try to get in for a little bit of nuke damage onto the Pudge. Here's the Exorcism. Death Prop going to try her best to stop this solo, and it looks like she will be successful in doing so. It costs them heavily two buybacks on the Death Prophet as well as the Pudge, as most of their team did die. I don't know, I think a big problem for Ban Earth Spirit at the moment is that they just don't have a lot of damage outside of Exorcism. That's really where a lot of it uh, lies. And with the Assault Cures on the Invoker, I don't know, they're not uh, without tools to help prevent against that. But last fight, she died before she was able to get it off inside the Chronosphere. And although Ban Earth Spirit's heroes are incredibly tanky, I believe they have two hearts as well as just Pudge uh, being ridiculously tanky as he is, as well as just BKBs. There's just no real, I don't know, oomph coming out from Ban Earth Spirit. Invoker's going up to the high ground to get the Hex off onto Alex. They won't be able to focus down. The second round of spells isn't thrown out. Fisher comes out from the Earthshaker. Will land onto two. CSO isn't taking a lot of damage, but A sure is on the back lines. They drop the Chronosphere. They're going to be able to focus down the Death Prop, but that's a dieback. Not going to have her available for this team fight. Railgun falling too low from the Viper. They'll be able to get that kill. Scarlet Mage ulti Echo Slime onto the punch. They're going to be able to get that kill at the very least. Earthshaker. They get the Enchant Totem on the Rubik, but he's going to die anyway. Now buyback score coming out from Tengen. I think they found their opening to start finishing this game, or at the very least secure themselves a rack. Well, they're going to drop EMP as well as an Ice Wall onto the Viper. He's just turning and right-clicking up onto the Skyrath Mage, especially with the help of the Omni Knight. If you were a Blade uh, Dagon combo going the way of Glacius, he's going to be able to blow up the Omni. Gem secured by the Viper. Will he be able to get out alive with the Repel? I think he will. I don't know. The Hex comes out from Tinker. He's running fairly low on mana. We'll have one more barrage of spells. I don't think it'll be enough. They're trying to chase him down. Faces Void also joining them. <laughs> they drop a Meteor. No Defting Blast coming out just yet. They're going to Time Walk forward. Bashes are coming out onto the Viper. So much hate, but in the end, they drop him and don't pick up the gem inside the base. 
That Viper Mini Chase was pretty much the name of the game at this stage in the game. Ban Earth, they're able to survive for a very long time. They have Hearts Galore, they have Guardian Angel, they have a Pudge with BKB. But at the end of the day, no one's doing the damage. And Tengen, Railgun, he's gone for a very, very strange Faces Void build. I haven't seen this build in a very, very long time, but he's doing substantial amounts of damage. Tinker's doing a lot of damage. They're going to secure two sets of Raxes, then they're going to rotate down for the third. Rubik's the only one alive, and Noobs R Us is literally diving the fountain in attempts to kill off this hero, and he will be successful in doing so. We'll rearm and blink out of there. The ultimate MBM as Noobs R Us shuts the Rubik down and forces the GG out from Fan of Soyon. Yeah, pretty much. That's going to uh, make the series one for one. This is a best of two, so there's not going to be a game three after this. But in the end, both teams are going to, I don't know, get away with one point, I believe, is how it all works out. So thank you for watching. I've been Grandis V, and he's been McLaurus. Um, well, we've also been casting on Hefla TV here. If you like the casting that we do here and want to follow us, you can find us on our social media sites, usually at Hefla TV. Um, but on YouTube, if you want to watch the VODs, uh, found a game that you really like and want to share it with your friends, you can find those at youtube.com slash uh, Well, as far as um, just signing us out for the um, end of the game, where can they find you, uh, Mikaloris, on your social media sites? Uh, on Twitch and Twitter, I am both Mike Loris, so twitch.tv slash Mike Loris, Twitter slash Mike Loris, uh, and that's pretty much all that you need to know there so I hope you guys follow and support me I hope you guys enjoyed the cast it was my second one for Hefla TV and uh, looking forward to doing more in the future well yeah so thank you again for watching this is going to be the end of streaming on Hefla TV one at least for now I don't think there are any other games later on today so I'll uh, just go ahead and back out play some music play some ads and if you want to support us that's a great way to do so just sit through the ads I know it's painful to watch twitch ads over and over but it really does help uh, so that's going to be it for us. Thanks for watching. See ya.